All right, I'm circling back on some of the moving topics now that the move is complete and we're mostly settled in with still quite a bit of stuff to do. I've still got a lot of pictures to hang. We're rolling out gym mats right now, so we got um, like 11 or 12 of those rolled rubber gym flooring. And before I was using a combination of horse stall mats and just the EVA foam mats for the non, you know, heavy lifting areas. So all the stall mats have went into this kind of side wing, which is where we have our dumbbells and stuff. And the main area we're doing rolled rubber gym flooring. So those were just delivered Friday. And so we started putting some of those out today and, um, but we got to do some stuff in Georgia. It's, you know, big deal, you know, pest control and everything. So I got to set that up. I called her some place, but they never got back to me. So I got to call another place. So we only rolled out two of the mats, um, but got to circle back to do that. Got to assemble a lot of the gym equipment still. But suffice to say, we're at least somewhat settled in. And now I've been at my job, I think, three weeks. So kind of settled in there too, my new job. But this topic is really lessons learned and what I would do again just when it pertains to the movers. So we did a full service moving group where they pack at least most of the stuff, load and unload. And overall, it was a good experience. So there was some things I still definitely would take away one of the big things early on was you're always going to take some stuff yourself there's some stuff that the movers won't take which is like chemicals well some won't take firearms and then there's some stuff you may personally want to take like uh, my personal level, i want to transport our computers i want to transport some of our monitors and stuff although they could have had them do it big believer in taking that stuff ourselves we also needed some stuff to live on because there was like a week gap in between them loading the stuff and then us actually closing on our house. But that's a different story. But there was other stuff we decided we were going to take. So my first thing is when you're getting the estimate, make sure there's very clear communication on what you plan to pack and what they're going to pack. Specifically, have them tell you how many boxes for each room you go through, are you thinking that we're going to pack? Because one of the big discrepancies came in after they came in and started packing. There was a little bit of a panic and the salesperson came out. And she said, I had you guys packing 115 boxes and us packing 78. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, we were never intending to pack 115 boxes. If you, you know, And I don't know if she ever mentioned that number. I can't say because it's not like I'm recording our walkthrough and our conversation. I'll say that I don't recall hearing 115. Had I heard 115, especially that we'd be packing almost twice as much as, you know, not twice as much, but still a large portion more than they would be. I'd be like, hold on a second. Doesn't sound accurate to me. So make sure that's very clear. If you're using full service, that would be doing packing. Make them read out and say, okay, I got us this much boxes, this for this many for this many rooms and i have you guys packing this many if you're going to be packing some i think a better method if you have enough time too would be is take everything that you want to take yourself and put it into a separate room it's hard when you're doing estimates and stuff if you're gonna you know if you have the space if you could separate them but at the very least make them read off and the interesting part is when it all came down with what they packed, the other person did an estimate. It was spot on the exact same number of boxes as she had, which we had the same conversation about what we were doing versus what we wanted. Just happened to be the first one who spent more time and felt like it was more thorough, had an assumption we were packing far more than what we were actually packing. And I'm not going to say it's her fault or our fault or anything. I just say it's be certain and you're clear. Now, they never charged me anything more. It was a binding contract. They could have tried to raise a fuss, and they didn't. Um, hopefully, she didn't get in trouble at work or anything, because it was not never the intention. We weren't trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes or anything. Fact is that 
when I said what I was like doing in my office, I think she misinterpreted that it was more than what I intended. And so just be important to be clear about that. Um, the other thing I would say is when the movers actually come or the packers come to pack, again, that separation of what you want them to take versus what separate that stuff, make it very clear. Cause what happens is all day long, you're spending, do you want us to pack this? Do you want us to pack that? We had a separated, like our master bedroom, we had everything in there that we were going to do ourselves. And that's where we put our cats so that, you know, there wouldn't be any issues because they're going in and out and leaving the doors open. So we had our cats in there and we said nothing in that room. We're doing everything in that room. Problem is in some of the other rooms, there was some stuff too, like in the gym and everything. And the end result was they took a few things that we didn't intend for them, but they also left behind a lot of stuff that we wanted them to take. There was no point in leaving behind. So it meant more stuff for us to take with our U-Haul. So we ended up having to load more stuff than we ever intended. And so, again, it I'll take it on us because it would have been better to have a, a better separation and stuff. And, and we tried to. We tried to mark off certain areas. But, um, again, it comes down to time. Prepare in advance. If you, if you have the time, sometimes you don't. But certainly we had the time because we knew this was coming for a little while and it would have been better and that's the other thing i would advise too if you're trying to get rid of stuff if you think hey i'm gonna do yard sale do this stuff do it well in advance because one of the things is when you're going to sell items not a lot you know things aren't just flying off on marketplace for a lot of things right now and so either give, you're gonna have to give yourself time for it to sell or be willing to take a big price cut um and then sometimes even free and so, you know, there's stuff I put in my neighborhood and stuff. I put it in, I put great prices, but wasn't a lot of people buying it. Of course, like I had a bunch of standard weight plates and I put on there, you know, 80 bucks for like 250, 300 pounds, 300 pounds of standard plates, a bar, a curl bar, dumbbells. And then of course, I finally just got frustrated because I was like, I don't want to hold this stuff around. I said, just free, just somebody take it. And then I had like five, six people responding. I was thinking, God, you fucking assholes you know I, I was offering for next to nothing anyways but now everyone's hitting me up one and stuff and i said i don't care who you know because somebody's like can you hold till five i was like no whoever can first take it gets it you know I'm not holding a free item till five o'clock um and i just was like you know it, i just it just annoyed me because it's not like it's a neighborhood people are struggling you know if you're you know, in this neighborhood you should be doing pretty decent it's not a struggle, you know. You could have forked out eighty bucks, which is I don't know whatever whatever price tag I put on it. I mean, it was like twenty cents a pound. It was nothing, and then nothing for the bars. So it was like nothing, and just you know, last minute I should have I should have put it earlier, but I didn't. Um, we ended up getting a dumpster, so I got rid of some stuff because there was some stuff that I like I said I just didn't want to take. I had a hard time with it. I had these old these JBL floor speakers that my dad had, had and i'd been holding on to them for a while i think out of sentimental reasons but they need a refund and we've got our stereo system and everything lined out and uh i was finally like wait a minute you know my dad was notorious for throwing stuff away all the time like he would have got anything he wasn't using would have got rid of even stuff you wanted to keep he would get rid of it if you were gone you know out of the house or whatever at school or something it's like he would have never held on to that stuff and so i you know, it's like, fuck it. But um, we ended up getting a dumpster and stuff. In hindsight, I had wish we should have got the dumpster earlier. Get rid of all that junk. So, again, that stuff you don't have to worry about whether they take or not take. Um, so, again, another lesson learned. Get a little, you know, get a dumpster earlier and get rid of that stuff. But it's tough. It's it's hard to know what you want to get rid of until you start pulling stuff out. But if I had to do back again, I would have sold stuff much earlier. would have got a dumpster earlier. Got rid of all the junk earlier and separated everything much more cleanly than what we did and um not much i can say for the mover you know that's actual when they loaded and you know they did a decent job and everything and the unloaders did a phenomenal job i'll, I'll say that man they were awesome um and um you know i, I try to tip very well for that stuff because honestly I don't think movers get paid nearly as much as they should for what they're doing. I mean, I know from personally moving stuff around, I mean, it's tough work. 
and they should be getting compensated probably far better than what they are a lot of times. Um, but, yeah, that's my biggest takeaways on that. Now, we'll say, too, another takeaway is don't make assumptions on prices and what things are going to cost until you actually start getting some estimates. Well, the reason I say that is um, we had assumed, because of our gym and stuff, that we were going to get raked over the coals for full-service movers. So our initial plan was to get pods, load all the gym stuff ourselves, and then have movers take the other stuff to save money. Actually, that would have ended up costing far more money. It was just cheaper to do the full-service movers. Some of this is distance, so that's why you got to get estimates and everything. But it, the estimates with the movers taking the gym equipment versus not taking it was about half of what the pods cost. Um, so it was a no brainer. Now we'll say this too. When we went to cancel pods, then they suddenly were almost, it was almost like half they were going to knock off, but even still, well, yeah, it would have matched the price, but at that point, us loading versus them loading. And so it didn't, it still wouldn't have made any sense, but I'll say that if you're doing pods, you can probably get a better price out of it than what they advertise. Not a big fan of that. Like just Offer a straight price. Don't do that crap like, okay, now I'm canceling. Now you're going to you know, knock pricing off. Why don't you give me a good deal to begin with? And then I wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, pods would work for a lot of people, um, especially if you have a lot of help or you get you know day labor or loading helpers or whatever. It, it can work very good for people, especially for longer moves. Now, we are moving from Kentucky to Georgia. It's about a six-hour drive. And I'll say that, you know, I think we probably would have, if we were taking all of our stuff, plus our gym equipment, three or four large pots, and, I mean, it would have been pretty close to what we paid for the full-service movers once you start to add that in. I mean, U-Haul would have probably been the cheapest one of all of them, um, but then, you know, you got to drive it yourself, and you probably we would have had to probably make more one trip, too. And so, look at all the options. Find out what makes the most sense and what you can afford. We're in a position we can afford the full service movers. Um, and so, that's the route we went into. Um, and, of course, if you have a relocation package or something like that, then, you know, it's, you know, do, you know do whatever you can for it. But if you're funding it yourself, take a look at your funds, take a look at your options, and get estimates for everything. Highly suggest it because you may find out that the full service movers don't cost a lot more. Now, if you're moving 24 hours away, one east coast to west coast, might be different depending on how much stuff you have. That's again, start to consider do you want to downsize before you move? In our instance, we we're moving into a larger house or what you may say, a much larger house. And so you have to consider if you downsize, then are you going to end up having to buy a lot of stuff on the other end? And is it going to cost? You know, you're going to lose a lot because, again, you're not making a lot selling stuff on Marketplace, whether it's gym equipment or anything else right now. I think just because the economy and stuff, um, you know, it's not like COVID day, especially with gym equipment where you could sell stuff for well over market value. Um, it's a buyer's market right now. So keep that in mind if you're moving into a bigger house. But, you know, I think uh, yeah, that's what you got to consider. We've already had to buy some stuff, so of course we were talking about downsizing just because it's a pain in the butt and moving. We did get rid of some stuff. We've already bought some stuff now. Some of it out of necessity, some of it out of want. Um, so you see that I have some bookcase. Well, you can only see the one here, but I have a few bookcases in my office here. And um, those were in our main room. We've turned our dining room into a library slash whiskey room which i uploaded a short you could see that if you wanted to i'll put a link in the description but um we got different bookcases for that so we got some ikea billy style bookcases for the um library room and i repurposed these ones here into my office and to hold some of the memorabilia so the one you see here is like this like the star wars section right here and then like over there where you can't see it there's some stuff for some of the other hobby things that go on and 
got some of my flight sim stuff and just random things. And we got a table for the whiskey room. And there's other odds and ends we've gotten. But that's just how you start to accumulate stuff. So already we moved in here, we started accumulating things. So we got rid of some stuff, but we're starting to already back it in into these other things. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I tell you, man, the Atlanta area, food wise, is amazing. And uh, compared to Kentucky, so tons of good food choices out here. So, if you're a foodie, man, it's um, it's a great place. It's weird, you know. It's living back and where I consider like a big city type of thing. Um, so I think that's it, kind of for the movers. Just be prepared, get the stuff done ahead of time. Whatever you want to sell, whatever you want to downsize, whatever you want to get rid of. Um, get a dumpster, get other stuff, just start getting rid of it. Or do early, delineate things depending on what they're wanting to do, you know, if they're taken or not. Um, so that way you can just say everything in this room is going, everything in this room is going, everything in this room is going. Don't even open that door, nothing in there is going. You know, just be able to do that. And we had it somewhat, but not nearly as much as we would probably need it to. And. Don't think because you got full service movers it's going to be easy because you're going to be walking around telling them a lot of stuff. And they're going to ask stuff. And so you'll be walking around a lot, doing a lot. And there's days in there, you know, Fitbit watch was showing like 21, 22,000 steps, 10 miles, just going, no, not even leaving the house, you know. So it's a lot of activity. Um, and so be prepared for that. Um, you know, and, uh, your experience is going to vastly you go know, because usually they're they're always contracting out. Now we went with a more local place based where we were, so the local loaders and packers were you know employees. Of course, on the opposite end, contracted out. I've had that experience a few times now, where sometimes you know you don't know what you're getting. Some people, you know, attitudes, different things. So I tell you the the ones they got to do the unloading here were phenomenal. So great job. Be careful, you know, of course, they can bust up your house pretty good. So the ones that were um, low or, you know, loading at the old house, they got our house in a few different spots or so repairs we had to make. And uh, you also find, especially if you have cats or probably any pets, but cats too, that you think of that don't create a lot of damage. Man, when you start to actually look at everything to get it ready for sales, it's a lot of crap. Nibbling on blinds, scratching up door frames, um, tufts of hair everywhere. You know, just uh, it's a lot. So they're uh, they can they can do a number. So just be prepared for that too. Anyways, hopefully somebody you know, hopefully anyone can learn from this experience. I'm doing some of this just as posterity for me to remember next time we move stuff that I'd wished we had done um beforehand so hopefully never move again this is really for me this is like final phase of my career and where i hope to finish my career so far i mean i love it here so far love it where i'm working it's a beautiful state beautiful area everybody's super nice super friendly food's great which is hugely important nice scotch selection which is also very important to me love the house um love the neighborhood and so I hope that this is, you know, the final thing, final phase. And uh, if we were to ever move again, it would, you know, preferably be in this area where we may just have a custom house built at some point down the road. But who knows? May not even need that. Never know or anything. So still got a lot of hard work in front of us. I feel like I put together about 50 million things between bookcases, tables, uh, gym flooring now, um, Chairs, just put together some chairs. <laughs> um, and a lot of other stuff. A desk, put together another desk for the art room. It's um, It's been a full-time job just doing all that stuff. So hopefully that's slowing down now. But even after we get all the gym flooring done, then we still got to put together the rest of the gym because only the dumbbells are 
set up right now. So still a lot ahead of us there. So, anyways, hope everybody has a great evening. Thank you.